Hello, 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 hello. So let's get on live. Let's do this. Go live. Hey, hey guys. Let me know if you're having any problems. Corn, yeah. Uh, Sammy, is my audio okay? I ch I switched out the uh, USB cable, and I hope. Uh, I hope that fixes the problem, or at least that uh, the problem hasn't come back with my audio. Uh, let me know. It's good. Awesome. Just give me a couple of minutes while I just share this uh, broadcast across. Uh, let's turn it up. Refresh. Oops. That's not what I meant to do. Okay. Am I over? On. Yep. Yeah, I'm on. YouTube. Let me share my YouTube stream. Just trying to get as many people on as possible. Uh, where am I? Periscope. Periscope. I'm going blind. What did I do with my periscope? Okay. Periscope. Okay. Over here, Periscope. Here we go. Let's share this live. Jackie M live. Uh, share broadcast. Post on Twitter. Hashtag. Oz scope. October. Oops. Oh. Oz. Oops. How, how many spelling typos? Oz. Scope October. I'll scope October tweet. Let's do this. Hey. Okay, let me just pull this around. Oops. Okay, YouTube. Live Asian Kitchen. Making. Sweet corn snack, among other things, at youtube.com slash Jackie M. Post. And, ah, uh, where am I? Okay, share my. Share on your timeline. Live Asian Kitchen Wednesday edition. Okay. Wednesday edition post. And share to a page. And I am sharing to uh, Truly Malaysian Live Asian Kitchen Broadcasting now Posts Okay, oi Crunchy, how you doing? Why is my screen not refreshing? All right so are we all go? Let's go back to YouTube, make sure. It's tough when you're doing everything yourself, you know. Uh, any chat messages? All right, guys. Hi, this is uh, Jackie M. This is my Wednesday, if you're watching this, on uh, Wednesday, uh, 25th of October, 5 p.m. Sydney time. This is live, otherwise it's a replay, right? Uh, no, I don't want to try to be the experience oh, darn it can i just get rid of it no i don't okay right here okay cool right here and uh this is being uh, multicast across to uh, facebook youtube and periscope and of course twitch which is the my uh main uh engagement platform but say hi if you're watching from elsewhere anyway because i'll try and catch your comments and uh acknowledge you if i don't it's not uh, because i hate you it's probably because i can't see your uh, comments right hang on let's go back to facebook okay yeah so
So uh, my name is Jackie M. I am a uh, Malaysian born, Sydney, Australia based uh, Malaysian street food specialist, more broadly Southeast Asian uh, cooking. Ah, Petra, hey, how you doing? I haven't seen you for a while. How you doing? Uh, come to the right place. <laughs> Crunchy. Hey, Remy, how you doing? Um, so tonight I'm going to uh, have, I'm getting a little bit slack, I think, with my content, but that's partly because I'm a little bit mindful of the fact that I've been sick for a few weeks now so I've got a lot of stuff to clear out as far as content that I gotta fill up uh, my blog with so I'm just kind of like randomly cooking up stuff that have been sitting in my fridge um, things that hopefully will not require too much effort as far as posting the recipes on my blog because I'm several weeks behind on my blog as far as recipes are concerned so tonight I'm gonna make something uh, <laughs> uh, something pretty easy right I'm going to be uh, making this uh, kind of like a, what we call kue in Malaysia. Kue is essentially kind of like a broad term to mean snack, right? And it's a sweet snack um, in this particular instance. And I used to really, really like to eat it. And I don't know whether it's just my childhood memories playing uh, tricks on me, but I remember it tasting it really, really fabulous, right? But traditionally, they are these uh, cream corn uh, little custody things that are wrapped in banana leaves and I did make it for the longest time here in Australia because banana leaves aren't that easy to come by. Um, I have attempted it a couple of times where I made it just in like regular molds okay and I wasn't completely blown away by it. I don't know whether it's my recipe or whether it's something else but nonetheless I'm going to attempt it again tonight just again using a regular mold so you should be able to replicate it quite easily at home assuming you can find this particular ingredient which I'll talk about in a little bit and before I go on any further just a shout out to Lenovo Australia and New Zealand for the laptops I use for my live streaming I'm using a Lenovo IdeaPad Y700 which is a gaming laptop and I'm using other um, devices as well also primarily uh, I've been so sick lately too. <laughs> Damn, oh, Patrick, you too, huh? I know, like, I got hit really, really bad with the flu and I'm still not 100% but I'm nearly there. It's just crazy how it's completely knocked me around. Um, and I like literally, uh, <laughs> I struggle to find the motivation to do my live streams at the moment because I just feel really kind of like, ugh, sort of thing, you know. Hey, see a whiskey, how you doing? What about uh, paper for a banana leaf? A wax paper for banana leaf substitute yeah I think you can right um, the only thing about the banana leaf is that it kind of like produces this nice little aroma this little kind of like uh, you know uh, which I think makes it that much more interesting before I, uh, I there's a savory thing that I want to have a go at making as well simply because again fridge clearance stuff right so I've just got my uh, sunbeam tabletop stove slash steamer that I've just turned on so uh, what I want to do is uh, this is something that I while I was sick I had to crank out some content relating uh, to Asian barbecue recipes and for that I pretty much stuffed my fridge with all kinds of ingredients that I don't usually otherwise use in my regular day to day and this one looks horrendous now okay I'm hoping it still tastes okay but this was one of the uh, kind of like casualties of the Asian barbecue recipes I was experimenting and shooting videos for uh, this is what we call radish okay you see all the black spots uh, on the outside uh, yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna peel them uh, but this is a pretty big radish okay so this is like basically two halves of a radish I used what I needed for the recipe and this the rest of it's been sitting in my fridge for several weeks now um, so I'm going to hopefully uh, be able to use it up for a very very simple dish and essentially it's kind of like steamed radish right very very Chinese very subtle dish and all you need is some stock of which you know I've got plenty because of my business I always have like chicken concentrated chicken stock in my fridge so I'm going to actually uh, apparently all I have to do uh, peel this cut it in half steam it for 15 minutes take it out slice it up and then steam it again sitting in the uh, chicken stock along with a, it's a soya sauce it sounds kind of boring so I might actually add a pinch of sugar to it and of course uh, probably some chicken powder right uh, okay, no worries, and uh, Sammy, we'll see you in a bit. Um, the other, okay, so while that's, uh, while the water is heating up, I'm going to actually just explain a little bit about this particular uh, flour here, okay? This, I, 
I know this is very common in Malaysia and it actually is an Indonesian product, right? Um, and in Indonesian uh, slash Malay, it, it, we knew it growing up as tepung hun kue. Okay, uh, th this time around, the, the, spelling ha the spelling has varied over the years. Okay, this particular packet I've got says hun h-u-n-k-w-a, hun kue. Um, I don't know whether that's like an Indian, I always assumed that Hun Kui was the brand name, but apparently it's not. The brand is something else. Um, but it says here in Indonesian that the brand is uh, Chap Bunga, Bunga which means flower, flower brand, uh, Hun, Kui, Hun Kui flower. All right, maybe Remy might tell us, basically like Japanese, Odin's radish, yeah, yeah, kind of like really subtle kind of stuff, you know, I just want to use it up and see if it's something that you know, if I don't eat it, look, it's not going to be uh, <laughs> whatever. But if it turns out interesting enough, you know, it might be something that I could use in future. I thought about doing other steamed stuff as well, but because we Asians growing up, we like to eat like steamed eggs and all that, right? Uh, really like almost uh, not runny, but very, very light and, um, you know, delicate steamed egg and all that. But yeah, I, I don't know if <laughs> I've got the motivation to actually eat it after the fact, you know. Uh, you know me, I, I, I'm I very kind of like a little bit, how would you say it? I mean, you know, as far as what I eat, I, 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 I fall back to like a, a handful of like my favorites, like stuffed vegetables and all that. And I actually have got, got some fish fillets in the back that I, I want to puree and into a paste and then stuff more uh, eggplants with later on but i don't know if i'll get around to it tonight uh, anyway this tepung hun kue uh, is literally a uh, mung bean flour all right mung bean is like green beans okay what you, uh, you most people know red bean and red bean paste mung beans uh uh, are, are, are the green version of the red beans that's how i always knew it okay so this is the flour from mung beans and uh you can actually i have seen bags of mung bean flour at Asian grocery stores, uh, which I think might do the job for this. But let me just quickly check on the ingredients list. We, we were so accustomed to buying these in these little like uh, paper logs growing up that I've never really researched uh, that closely into what else is in this particular pack. Okay. Okay. It says it's got green beans and vanilla. Okay. So that's all it is. So it's like it's kind of like enhanced with some vanilla flavoring and we use it for essentially like uh kue or like these snacks right um i have seen other recipes for something very similar essentially sweet corn kue using instead of this mung bean flour using a combination of a number of other flours things like uh uh, uh i think uh corn flour tapioca flour that sort of stuff right um so there are alternatives out there if you can't get a hold of this but any decent Asian grocery store, especially one that caters to Southeast Asians, uh, like Indonesians and Malaysians like us, uh, you should be able to find this in the flower section where they keep all the other types of flowers, like rice flour, wheat flour, and all that sort of stuff. All right. So uh, keep an eye out for this. Um, so what I, all I really need for this is uh, a, a, a log of this, uh, some cream corn, some coconut milk. All right. Um, most recipes you'll find that are Malaysian in origin they'll actually instead of saying like uh 400 mils of coconut milk or coconut cream or something like that they will actually specify uh like uh milk extracted from one whole co coconut right so in this particular instance this re recipe that i'm referencing says they want three and a half cups of coconut milk extracted from one coconut okay so it's fairly arbitrary because as you can imagine coconuts can vary in size and in the amount of a uh, 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 flesh you can get out of it but essentially when you're generating three and a half cups of uh, uh, you know coconut milk from one whole coconut you are looking at a, like a i guess a, a thinnish coconut milk okay but i'm using coconut cream so i may actually top it up that's all the coconut cream i have left sitting around in my pantry so i will pour this into something and measure it and if i need to top up i'll just add water right so if you're kind of like uh working like measurements and that sort of stuff don't get too fixated on coconut cream coconut milk whether you're using it from you know grating it from scratch and all whatever yeah don't worry too much about it just <laughs> just uh guesstimate or what we call aga aga in malay all right um okay so 
<coughs> and then I want a pinch of salt just to add flavor to this. So essentially, very, very easy. You want to uh, throw all this into a saucepan with some sugar, uh, simmer it till it thickens. And then, like I said, usually you will have like um, pieces of banana leaves. You'll put like a couple of tablespoons of this on the banana leaves and then fold it up, right? And fold it down and voila, it's actually, once it cools down, it will set and it's ready to eat. You don't have to do anything else with it. Okay, and uh, many thanks for watching. Uh, I'm just trying to make sure I don't miss any comments and uh, hello people on Periscope. I'm surprised that <laughs> I'm surprised. I, I always joke about how Periscope people hate me because I, I left Periscope for about a year and then when I started using this third party service to actually push my stream out to all destinations, I figured I might as well, you know, since I've got a pre-existing Periscope account, I would just connect to it. Yet every time I stream and I push it out, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, Periscope people hang around for about 30 seconds on average and then they all drop off. <laughs> so yeah, so if you're the last person hanging on around on Periscope, thanks for that, you've uh, kind of uh, <laughs> made my day. Um, okay, so first up, we're going to, I can hear the water just starting to actually uh, heat up in that uh, desktop steamer. So I'm just going to start peeling this off, alright? Like I said, it looks really grotty, but I could I could just throw it out, but I figured I might as well just attempt this recipe that's not going to be too taxing as far as uh, ingredient availability and all that sort of stuff is concerned. Okay, so I'm just going to peel it with my peeler over here. And uh, we're going to... If you're watching, let me know where you're watching from, especially if you're new. I've, as you know, I've got a number of giveaways and you're watching like uh, on other platforms, YouTube or Facebook or anything else. Um, <laughs> hi, May. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. But uh, if you want to be in the running for the giveaways that I have um, happening on my channel, I, I need you to follow me on Twitch because the... The tool that I use to draw the giveaway winners. You don't have to do anything except be a follower of mine on Twitch. And my Twitch URL is just twitch.tv slash Jackie M Food. All right. Um, yeah. So, uh, like I said, I, I always have a number of different giveaways on hands. I don't always draw at every session because it just becomes ridiculous. Um, but there are also other criteria depending on who's sponsoring the giveaways, right? And they are essentially geographically um, uh, confined criteria because some sponsors don't want to send something big and bulky halfway across the world. It's just not worth uh, the effort. But that's pretty much it. You don't have to uh, answer any trick questions or, or do anything ridiculous. You just have to be a follower on Twitch of mine and that will uh, automatically enter your name into a draw. Uh, every time, all right? Crunchy BRB. I'm gonna check out the YouTube stream. Cool, you do that. Okay, so it looks pretty nice now that it's been peeled up. So let me just, like I said, this particular recipe is from a uh, Hong Kong, it's not Hong Kong, I'll just show you the cookbook that I referenced for this, all right? So I've got a bunch of cookbooks from Asia. Uh, this one, I think I picked it up in Singapore maybe. It says all about steaming, okay? So steaming in itself is, to me, is a, fa a fairly fascinating topic, right? Because when I do Malaysian street food, uh, there's not a lot of steaming uh, generally with street food dishes, except unless you're talking about dim sums and that sort of stuff. So I do a lot of stir fries. I'm totally comfortable with that type style of cooking, a lot of boiling, a lot of like uh, barbecuing and all that. Steaming is a little bit of a more refined art and that's something I'd like to explore a little bit more, assuming there's inches, all right? But uh, this entire cookbook um, covers all these different uh, tips about steaming as far as Asian uh, food is concerned. I find it fascinating, right? Because um, we all know steamed food is healthy and uh, And delicious okay so what I want to do apparently according to the recipe is just cut these vertically like this and then throw them in the steamer for 15 minutes okay so let me scrap the steamer Here you go. okay Timer. 
Okay, Google. Set timer for 15 minutes. Cool. That's my... My good old... Uh, my new phone. My Note, Samsung Note 8 is a lot more responsive than my old phone. Like I'll be like, okay, googling, and then <laughs> like thirty seconds, they'll be it'll, thirty seconds later, it'll be like, I'm sorry, I can't understand what you said or whatever. I, I assumed for the longest time that it was, you know, a Google thing that Google's assistant just wasn't quite as sophisticated as uh, as Apple Siri. All right, but it turned out it was my phone because once I replaced the phone, it, it worked pretty well with this one. Okay, so here we go, crunchy. Um, I'm just gonna, like I said, throw all these ingredients here. In all honesty, this is a 150 gram log, right? The recipe calls for 120 grams. I'm not gonna like fuss about like taking out 30 grams of this, which is, it's hard to say what the equivalent is. Um, so I'm just gonna use the whole log. <laughs> all right. So again, you know, it's, uh, it's got a touch of a vanilla uh, uh, aroma to it. And then you want, uh, how much do I want of the cream coconut? Cream coconut. I want one cup of this, right? I see so many cooks using Google to set a timer, doesn't want to use clocks anymore. <laughs> Who can afford clocks anymore? Hourglasses, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's Noah. Uh, Noah, the little monkey, he was quite. I was quite happy to leave him to watch his show out here, but then I, I thought I'd offer it to him because it's funny, you, you, you assume, because it's non-verbal, you assume that he doesn't understand, but he understands more than you realize. So before we went on air, I said, oh, would you like to go to your bedroom and watch your show? So he starts walking to his bedroom and, uh, and, and placing himself on the bed because that's almost like a ritual for him now to just sit on his bed and watch one of his favorite shows on his laptop but apparently it's turned into a ritual for him to start knocking on the door after like five minutes as well so let's see if i can uh, <laughs> put him off for a little bit longer and then uh i might have to fetch him okay i think it's because some don't have that at hand yeah exactly yeah i i don't, I don't even remember what happened to my last uh timer see i had a restaurant for many many years so those kind of like gadgets this is like pre Google Assistant days, right? All those kind of gadgets just got kind of like trashed around in a restaurant kitchen environment. So I guess I must have thrown it out when I uh, when I uh, quit the restaurant scene. Okay, uh, again, I'm using coconut cream in lieu of coconut milk, but uh, I'm going to actually add some water to it just to kind of like, uh, first of all, I need more liquid than what I've got left in here, but also because uh, because here we go because this is really thick right we want something that's not quite as thick okay so you can see this is a struggle <laughs> trying to hold this in place uh, here we go crunchy you found a job yet you know what i found out someone um, Whoops, that's Noah. Okay, I'm gonna have to get him in two seconds. So I want three and a half cups of uh, coconut milk, right? So this has taken me to two cups. That's three cups. And I'm gonna add a half cup like this, right? And let me just scrape this down. I want electrical equipment, my kitchen aside, my fridge and freezer. Uh, speaking of which, I was reading something. Something you know how Sea of Whiskey, you were going on about NBN and that sort of stuff. There's so much in the Australian media about how crappy NBN is and how nobody's happy and and how the execution has just been completely like uh, messed up. That um, okay, I need half a cup of sugar, right? And then they said that, uh, in fact, people are actually reverting to using uh, mobile data to get high-speed internet. Obviously, they didn't talk to me, right? But they're saying, oh, mobile data is getting more and more affordable now, and they're getting super-duper, like, crazy speeds, which is rubbish, right? They say you can get, like, uh, what was that? 
uh, one gigabit uploads, so like, uh, downloads, okay, which look, I get, I've got this super duper latest model, you know, latest, like I'm, I'm connecting via the 5G channel, right? And I'm getting, I'm lucky to get about 25 megabits uh, upload and download, okay, which is adequate for live streaming, but it's not like one gigabit like what they're saying. Nonetheless, they're saying like everybody's connecting via mobile data now and they're talking about how um, the, you know, the electric, like whatever, uh, the microwaves and all that sort of stuff, um, how they can be detrimental to your health has not actually been explored. And I've always thought about that, right? Because <laughs> I've got so many electrical stuff happening around here and everything's all connected. It's just a little bit, uh, yeah, food for thought. <laughs> I just find analog variants more soothing. <laughs> Mobile data for high speed internet. Yeah. And they were saying, uh, I don't know if you guys, if you've been around long enough, there was this other service, right? That I connected to for a cheaper price. Cause I'm t I, I told you guys right now, I'm paying $150 a month for 80 gigs of data, mobile data. Um, that's just of one of the servers. I actually have more on a, a different plan as well. So 80 gigs for $150. They said, oh, you can actually get it much cheaper. You can get it for like, whatever, like, I don't know, 100 gigs or $50 or something. But this other service provider, I was thinking, I connected to it. And they say, oh, you can get like, uh, you know, really good speeds with them as well. I was thinking, no, you can't. <laughs> Not me. I was lucky to get two megabits uh, on that. They said, oh, you know, um, that you should be able to get at least 25 megabits with that other service. I was thinking, no, that's rubbish because I connected to it and I had to cancel it. And they actually acknowledged that uh, they, had, they were oversubscribed on that plan uh, on, on, on their service and they offered me a refund. So don't ever believe everything they tell you in the media, guys. It's my, uh, <laughs> what I'm trying to say. Uh, um, cell phones operate a non iod Ionizing radiation, it can't trigger chemical reaction that lead to health problems such as genetic. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm gonna take your words for it. Photons and they hit the ultraviolet energy levels. Like those marble tabletop thing on the jigs. <laughs> marble, marble tabletop. Okay, I'm just gonna try and like um, um, uh, get rid of the lumps here. I'm gonna add a bit of salt to this as well. Okay, so a pinch of salt in most Asian uh, desserts, like um, the theory is that it helps to kind of like bring out the flavor of the sweetness, all right? So just stirring it around. I'm almost inclined to actually do a double batch of this because this doesn't look like it's a lot at all. Confused by people scared of radio cell waves, they're still below infrared in energy levels, far below visible light. Okay, <laughs> if you say so, see a whiskey. <laughs> oh, I can sleep easy tonight. Okay, the lumps are actually primarily from the co uh, the coconut cream, all right, which is co coagulated because it's been sitting in my fridge for a, for a while. Probably when was the last time I used coconut cream in my broadcast? Because um. you always hear about people who claim that they got cancer from using mobile phones and you know, and then it's been disproved and then it hasn't been disproved and whatever, I don't know. Okay, let's cook this up. Because conspiracy. <laughs> All right, I was watching actually, I had to go through my YouTube videos because uh, a website wanted to feature them, but they wanted ones that were not branded. And so I had to actually go through some of my old videos. So if you, by the way, if you're wondering what I'm talking about, I do have a YouTube channel, uh, which consists of both short edited videos and also these live streams, right? And I actually think my live streams are actually impacting on the, uh, <laughs> on 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 uh the the views of my non uh of my non live streams my short edited videos like uh youtube penalizes me for live streaming almost <laughs> um anyway uh basically i 
was asked to basically troll through my YouTube channel and the URL is youtube.com slash Jackie M in case you're wondering. Um, and uh, somebody on YouTube, uh, why is it so blurry? Sate boys, Fusion Pixels, April City, how you doing? <laughs> Thanks for watching guys. Yeah, so um, anyway, I was going through all my YouTube videos and I came across one of the videos using this stove here that I'm using right now and it looked like it was sparkling straight out of the box, shiny, beautiful. And I was really embarrassed about its current state. So I need a new uh, dinky little tabletop stove. Any sponsors out there who wants to uh, <laughs> send me out one? I am all years. Below that, it just warms you up. Huh. And the orbital takes a lot of energy. <laughs> CC or whiskey knows all that stuff. <laughs> Samsung, yeah, Galaxy, uh, Samsung uh, Note 7s. Wasn't the ga was it the Galaxy? I don't know. It was the Note 7 that exploded? I'm on a Note 8 now. <laughs> Uh, and by the way guys if you go to uh, YouTube uh, look for Fusion Pixels which is a YouTube channel uh, the like travel adventure videos there that are shot and edited by one of the owners of uh, Sate Boys right Sate Boys I've told you guys is, um, where is it hang on Sate Boy is the sponsor of one of my upcoming giveaways, right? This is the brand. Sate Boy is completely new in Australia, around the world. Okay, so you guys will be among the first people to get to try this if you win. Uh, and I have like about four sets, uh, as in four boxes, box gift sets of these to give away coming up in November. So keep your eyes peeled for my announcements. And... Uh, on social media, on, on Discord. If you're watching on Twitch, you will know what Discord is. So your Discord invitation is waiting for you at bits.ly slash Discord Jackie, all lowercase, right? And, um, and also I have other giveaways to announce. I'm waiting for someone to get back to me, but I was showing you guys this, uh, <laughs> this Brooklyn Bridge inspired, uh, uh, high quality leather sneakers all right that are available for giveaway and I'm waiting for details as to what criteria the uh, sponsor wants to set for them but uh, basically a company in New York Brooklyn New York are offering a pair of their shoes for one of my audience members and they're not just any shoes, all right? <laughs> They're good shoes. So make sure you follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Jackie M Food. I'm running out of gas on this, so let me grab something. Grab a new canister. Here you go. What about app? A few was problems, not free of problems, unfortunately. Switch to LG. What's the, what's the, what model LG are you using? Are you using Seal Whiskey? I should just call you whiskey. I think seal whiskey is like it's not it's not as bad as some, but it's just whiskey is just a quick and easy abbreviation. I need removable batteries. I've had too many problems with hard hangs firmware that might need away. Okay, cool. Whiskey. <laughs> whiskey it is. <laughs> removable batteries that's like uh what did i have the last time i had a sony xperia the last time and the reason was that like it would it was one of the it was the only thing they had in the store that would take an external sim um because i had a lot of data on my previous phone with an external sim all these new phones they well, I don't know if the Samsung Note does. Maybe it does now. I forget now. Let's see if her soybeans also say whiskey. Oh, cool. Oh, speaking of which, uh, I need to tell Soybean, but if you get to tell her beforehand, uh, Soybean is one of two of my winners of the Blue Flower products, right? Who didn't get her uh, prizes yet, and it's been five weeks. And the sponsor went to the post office to check up on it. The post office basically said, 
wait up to two months, which obviously is, you know, not feasible. So um, the sponsor is going to send two more sachets of the blue flower powder itself, right? Uh, the original price was for two sachets of the blue flower powder and also a pack of uh, blue tea, right? And she thinks, okay, dismiss. Okay, that's my timer. The theory is that uh, maybe the blue tea got kind of picked up by border security and confiscated. Okay, we don't know. But um, so this time she's playing safe. She's only sending uh, these two people, including soybean, the two blue flower uh, extract sachets. Okay, but at my end, I will separately send um, the two of them a copy of my cookbook my mini cookbook, okay, which usually, usually sells for, I think, $20, $25 or something like that, including postage. So that's my kind of like, uh, <laughs> my part as far as making up for it. Rest, uh, how you doing? The cats are bouncing on it, keep her account, keeping her account, logging in on tablet, but I'm sure she's, Logged in on tab, I'm sure she's asleep. <laughs> I'm, I'm constantly amazed at how late some people stay up in your part of the world because what time is it over in, uh, in your neck of the woods now, whiskey? Okay, so this has thickened up. Let me just quickly taste it, make sure it doesn't taste powdery still, okay? That's how I know it's done. Okay, you see how it just suddenly That's no one knocking. <laughs> it tastes to me. It's 2.25 at home. Okay, Rasta, 2.25 a.m. Why are you still up? <laughs> I'm going to add a little bit more sugar. Okay, just a sprinkling more sugar. And I'm going to add a little bit more salt where I am. 11, okay. Okay. Huh, I would have thought you'd be in the same time zone as soybean um, whiskey. No? Because you're West Coast, right? And Rasta, you would be East Coast, USA. Am I right? Okay, there you go. Let me go, let me go and get Noah quickly. Hang on. I know he just he just he just wants the attention I think <laughs> I'll be up until my daughter has to be up for school holy moly <laughs> why Rasta my time is Jackie time it's always Jackie time yeah exactly <laughs> all right here we go let's take this out okay so this is ready and I want to pour it into this mold here and it's flexible and non-stick as well. But otherwise I would do what uh, Whiskey suggested, which was uh, baking paper. I'm still thinking maybe I could use paper. Oh, no. Look, theoretically, it should just um, tip out of this in a nice, beautiful square, All right, So let's do this. Oops, here you go. Minch, how you doing? Whereabouts are you again? Uh, <laughs> if you're in New South Wales, I could do a giveaway if there's more than two people from New South Wales by the end of this. Uh, otherwise, my next giveaway is at 1950 follows. I don't know what I'm at at the moment. I stopped 
I stopped <laughs> I stopped watching my new follows because I don't want to be shattered. <laughs> yeah. So my next uh, my next uh, giveaway is at 1950 follows. Have I hit 1950 already? I've I've lost track. No. If I've hit 1950, forget what I said. Then my next giveaway is at 2000 because I only just gave away a Rode microphone uh, one or two broadcasts ago for hitting that next milestone. Okay. So someone won a Rode microphone which was the latest giveaway and also I have I still have six sets of the ayam uh, sources to give away but the ayam sources are restricted to New South Wales Australia residents only okay for shipping purposes because they're big and bulky and heavy and anyway yeah whiskey I didn't want to say anything <laughs> yeah we just call it we just call we'll just call them uh, minge, right? Okay, so here we go. And so I still have a uh, two more Rode microphones to dispense with, and I have two more Lenovo mini speakers to give away. Um, both of which are available to my international audience. I have a pair of shoes worth. Uh, <laughs> several hundred dollars to give away but uh, I'm waiting for details as to uh, criteria right as far as geographic criteria is concerned and also I have uh, gift boxes of the satay sauces the Vietnamese satay sauces they're available I'm, I'm giving them away in um, in November and you will be among the first people in the world to try them so that one day when they are everywhere and tell people that you know what it's all about way before everyone knew. Try Din Tai Fung. I told you to try Din Tai Fung. Ravens, how you doing? If the sauces are vegan at all, uh, the sauces, let me have a look. Hang on. No, we should. Uh, Raven, you're talking about these? The New South Wales? Are you in New South Wales? Let me have a look. Uh, but if you're talking about the ayam sauces, let me have a look. I think they are. I think they would be vegan. Does it tell me? No, our shoes, please. Oh my goodness. Here we go. Good He hasn't played with that toy for months and suddenly right now he decides he wants to bang the hell out of it. <laughs> it's trying to annoy me. <laughs> Din Tai Fung is good, is it? I, I don't eat pork, so I've never actually been to Din Tai Fung because I, I, uh, I know Westerners have a love affair with uh, food, that's, uh, with dumplings and stuff like that. But invariably, dumplings are very uh, pork in intensive in their ingredients, right? Even the non-pork uh dumplings tend to have uh pork in them okay <sighs> ingredients for the teriyaki sauce uh does it tell us it doesn't say <laughs> i would imagine they would be vegan all right uh look i can't say in all honesty just says no added MSG preservatives and gluten free as well sweet and sour sauce right okay so basically you get one bottle each of a sweet and sour sauce teriyaki sauce uh, lemon chicken sauce and uh, poison sauce right and they are all gluten free and they are courtesy of I am Australia but you have to be in New South Wales to win one of these um, for the Sade boys, they are working on a, a vegetarian version of it, but otherwise this one does contain a uh, dried shrimp, right? But that's why they, uh, they're offering the giveaways as a gift box set, right? It will have like hot Sade sauce, uh, a mild one, and hopefully the vegetarian one as well, if it's ready to roll by the time we do the giveaways, right? Okay, so that is that motivationally challenged i'm wollongong okay cool okay how many uh 
So we've got Crunchy, we've got Raven. What about Minge? Is Minge in New South Wales? Poison Teriyaki and Sweet and Sour was that? Yeah, that was it. Poison Teriyaki Lemon. Go, so go to ayam.com. Might be .com.au, I'm not sure. <laughs> and it should tell you. Sydney, okay, moist. <laughs> moist. <laughs> Minge. <laughs> Alright, okay, we can do a giveaway at the end of this, alright? This should not take too long. So this is it, right? Uh, once it cools down to room temperature, you want to throw it in the fridge just to make it cold. And let me just put it over here. And pull out the radish. Let me just uh, get a knife and stuff. Okay, here we go. And this is the radish that's been steamed, right? So these are just your good old uh, Japanese, Chinese radish. We are going to cut them into slices. a lot of it actually now that uh now that i've got it in front of me no we shush please i'm trying to see no this is too big Shush, my little door closer and <laughs> whatever. Jackie caught more. Than <laughs> oh, no. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. you, you would do the same thing too, uh, Crunchy. All right, so you, we want to cut these into uh, slices about like, uh, I guess about two centimeters thick. Yeah, the Japanese are big on eating uh, radish, but uh, whiskey would know about this. I, growing up as a kid, we would have radish in like uh, broths, like uh, primarily like beef broth or chicken broth, because radish is uh, it's got a kind of like a nice sweet um, note to it. So usually you will have chunks of radish in those, and also it really soaks up the flavors of everything around it as well so usually it's more like an old people i always imagine because my, my parents used to like eating the radish you know uh when they drank the soup we avoided it we ate we we, we drank the soup we ate the meat but like we, we generally avoided the radish itself but like i said i had to use it up so there you go um so i want some water uh some coconut uh some uh, stock in here just call me minji <laughs> allow okay they all seem to be vegan. Okay, cool, right here. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm all familiar with Western and Indian cooking. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's true, actually. I figured like your 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 Japanese side might actually know a little bit. Neil, still all the appliances. <laughs> Noah's baby kitchen. That's a good idea, right? Noah's baby kitchen. Make him earn his keep. Maybe maybe unlike me, he will actually uh, <laughs> make it profitable. So this is what I'm trying to replicate from this book on uh, steaming. Okay. And uh, th those little bits are coriander, but we can ignore them. I've got some uh, like um, green onion shallots or spring onion, whatever we call them. So it says you want two cups of stock, uh, two tablespoons of light soy sauce, and quarter teaspoon of salt. Very, very subtle, as you can imagine. So I'm going to like jazz it up a little bit with some chicken powder and uh, maybe a pinch of sugar as well. So two cups of stock and this is actually concentrated stock all right so i'm only going to use one cup here and then i'm going to top it up with like some water yep 
you would think the more concentrated the better but this is actually like not just concentrated chicken stock this is actually essentially chicken juice if you can imagine me like uh what i do is i cook the chicken like fillets that i use for my business sous vide style so they're in the bag and they're uh, very very gently poached um and they ooze out this juice right that's this is what this is okay so every week i've got like at least a couple of liters of this that i generally struggle to figure out what to do with the other thing i'm going to add to this by the way guys is uh some white pepper all right so i've got some sugar here i'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of sugar over this which sounds weird but look <laughs> i think it will work what was that vegetable again you're cooking this radish this is like um the it's sometimes called turnip in Asian like recipes and stuff like that, but it's radish like one of these big. They look like a big giant carrot, but white in color, and we use it like uh, in soups usually. And I had to buy it for this particular recipe I was uh, experimenting with for a video that I had to shoot sort of thing. So I had a big giant radish, and I only used a tiny little portion of it. Okay, so. Right, here you go. So chicken powder, right? Okay, that's like about uh, half a teaspoon. Uh, some white pepper. No, we don't touch, please. Here we go. Good boy. You go and watch your show, baby. Go watch your show. Okay, now we go and watch your show. Okay, and it says how much salt a quarter teaspoon? I see them in the shops and never bought them, don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly. <laughs> you could like, uh, I used to sell radish cake at my restaurant, like uh, stir fried radish cake, which in traditionally used to be made with shredded radish that's then cooked up with like rice flour and a little bit of tapioca flour. And then like what I just did with that uh, dessert thing, um, it thickens up and then you pour it into a mold and then you have to steam it and it turns into these like, um, uh, basically uh, squares of radish cake that you cut it into cubes and then you use it in the stir fry right um, but I didn't do that because <laughs> it's just too much work trying to shred these things I just made like a regular like rice flour plus water plus tapioca flour um, that you then cook up um, it will thicken up the same way as well and then the radish comes into it when I do the stir fry I add this preserved radish into it right and apparently that's how they do it nowadays as well back in Malaysia but yeah okay so I think I've got all the ingredients in there the other thing I'll be inclined to put in is like a dash of like what, is, uh, what they call it like Chinese rice wine or whatever but we are going to just do this now and 15 minutes and okay Google set timer for 15 minutes Okay, hopefully no one let out the anger. <laughs> okay, so got that. Got this. You can see how, like, even though it's still hot, you can see how it's actually, like, already, like, solidified into, like, it's taking the shape of the square pan that goes in. Okay. So, while we're waiting for that to happen, I'm going to... I'm gonna get started on my fish paste, all right? Sorry guys, if you watch me do this 50 times. Let me move this away. So again, I'm back to using basso fillets over here. <laughs> Where do you get those uh, emotes, your whiskey? And by the way, again, guys, if you're if you if you say hello and I didn't acknowledge you, I'm not being rude, all right? It's just I can't I can't monitor so many, because this is shared across three different Facebook pages, so it's a bit hard to monitor everything at the same time. Okay, so again, um, defrosted frozen bassa fillets. Okay, only six fifty a kilo. And the other day when I did this, I used some barramundi fillets, which cost $18 a kilo. And in all honesty, um, who was it? Was it Sammy or somebody else? 
who told me it was uh, <laughs> I was wasting it. <laughs> she was right. It was a little bit of a waste because, in all honesty, barramundi fillets turn into a paste really don't hold up that well next to bass, the much cheaper bass of fillets. All right. Okay. Should I do it all? No, I'll do them separate. Okay, so once defrosted, you're gonna have all this liquid at the bottom, all right? So I'm just gonna throw it out. Okay, I'm gonna do it in two batches. And to that, I'm going to add um, chicken powder again, right? Are we live, Hollywood? Yes, we are. All right, again, using the good old chicken powder. This time, again, I'm using, only because I'm trying to use up this batch, all right? In all honesty, I do think that the, uh, the, the regular version is better. But this one says it's a Hong Kong gold label chicken powder. Okay, whatever. So chicken powder, uh, a little bit of sugar, and the other place I can't say hello at on is uh, Google Plus. If you're watching on Google Plus, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, but yeah, hop over to some place. <laughs> There's a proper chat where I can see your messages. Uh, white pepper, right? And then I want tapioca starch. Okay, you can use cornstarch as well, all right? They all pretty much do the same thing. So I think this is the right one. All right, Google Plus still exists. Shut up. <laughs> hey, I'm a big deal on Google Plus. I'll have you know. <laughs> all right, so there you go. Let's blitz this quickly. shut it down after delinking from YouTube uh, no it's still going it's still going but like look Google Plus I have 1.8 million followers on Google Plus all right and anything I share I'm lucky to get 10 like 10 plus ones on okay which means that it is it literally is a ghost town nowadays but whatever <laughs> That's why people don't like hitch your entire online presence on the one like uh, platform, right? There are my okay. Let me just what is this. I need to check my Google Plus page. <laughs> hey, for all you know, you probably like gain a ton of followers. million <laughs> I actually you know I know this sounds a little I don't want to be a Debbie Downer and all that right but when I got pregnant with Noah and I was going through like a really bad uh, breakup and whatnot I actually decided to ditch Google Plus and then like after about six months or whatever I went back and had a look and realized I like gained like thousands and thousands of followers and that's when I kind of like went back and, 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 and got active again right and then like when they launch Google Hangouts on air, that's when any of the old fans come and watch you, you on Twitch. I don't know, that's a good question. Um, they, 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 they still interact like, you know, like, you know, the, the, the diehards still interact on Google Plus. I don't know how often they actually watch on Twitch in all honesty. But then to be fair, I've found it a real struggle to find, to, to move people onto Twitch who are actually not there, all right? Like right now I'm live streaming onto Facebook and like Periscope and all that, um, and YouTube. How many people have actually gone onto Twitch every time I give a call out to say you need to follow me on Twitch to be in the running? Um, <laughs> I don't know, maybe two. <laughs> but uh, people are really kind of like, kind of, you know, Kind of like tired of like creating new social media accounts i think really but yeah but whatever you know that's why i'm actually multi-streaming across all these uh, different platforms now rather than try and 
pulls them onto Twitch. It's just a different audience. All right, so there you go. You see the paste? Okay. This is the paste that, uh, if you this is your first time watching me do this, this is the paste that we use as the base for a lot of different stuff in Asian cooking, right? Things like fish balls, fish cakes. Um, yeah, fish balls and fish cakes. <laughs> a number of different types of fish cakes and whatever, all right? Uh, actually are uh, made from fish paste. Okay, there you go. Let's the rest of this in there. Makes it easier for me to win prizes. Exactly right. You know, Raven, I think you're like one of the first, you're one, you're one of the only people currently in chat who hasn't actually won anything from me. <laughs> Rasta, couldn't, I could understand. They just don't know Twitch and don't know how cool it is. Yeah, it is very much so. Exactly. Some people think that you have to subscribe. All right. Because I'm a partner Twitch streamer. And first thing they see is subscribe. And it's like, no, no. no. Oh, thanks. Uh, thanks for the bits, uh, Whiskey. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Mint, you haven't too. That's because you guys are fairly new. But everyone who's been with me for like, you know, at least two months, they've won. Not just won one time, but a lot of them have won multiple times. And people like Whiskey, they've won multiple times and actually opted not to uh, not to uh, accept the prize because they want to spread the love. And also Whiskey, Whiskey has got too much uh, computer junk at, in his place to be able to handle any more <laughs> rubbish coming <laughs> their way. So... I got shafted last time, 50% chance. <laughs> oh, did you? Oh, right, so you were the one. <laughs> okay, right here. Well, yeah, well, we'll do a, we'll do a draw today, okay? At the end of this, we'll do a draw, whether you're the only person left standing on or otherwise. We'll, just for your... <laughs> just, <laughs> just to make it up to you. But that was just the one time. Like, seriously, most people have won multiple stuff off of me. Um, so, a little bit of sugar. You can skip the sugar in all honesty, when I used to do it for my restaurant, I didn't put the sugar in. I put the sugar in because I'm using batter fillets, which I, I, I tend to find to be a little bit like uh, really bland, right? Chicken powder, I'll probably put a little bit more of that, okay. And um, tapioca starch, fish, how is the Asian cuisine selection in Australia? Oh, God. fish, look. Hollywood, LA does not compare to Sydney, all right? Sydney is fantastic. Sydney is virtually like Asia. You go out to uh, Sydney city and you would think you were in, like in an Asian city. But I've been to, I've been to America. <laughs> uh, you're better in some places than others, but like, no, there's no comparison between um, Asian food in this part of the world versus Asian food over in your part of the world, all right? <laughs> all right, I have too much stuff. Yeah, five years ago, I got rid of half a metric ton of computers. Ten years ago, I got rid of a metric ton. <laughs> too much stuff. See, there you go. And what, you guys should all make friends with uh, Whiskey. What, what Whiskey's done before, he's one stuff and actually offered to uh, have it sent to other people, all right? So I've got pepper, uh, tapioca starch, uh chicken powder a little bit of sugar and that's it that's all i need we're gonna blitz this again only for like uh, about five seconds or so right guys so just be careful you don't have this running for too long because the blades will heat up and end up like pseudo cooking the fish okay okay <laughs> this key will be my best friend that doesn't have fish or shrimp in it. <laughs> you make Tom Ka, Tom Ka guy. Uh, all right. Tom, Tom, Ka, Tom Ka, you can actually make your own paste from scratch though. It should be fairly easy. Tom, Tom Ka guy is the, the coconutty chicken celery soup, right? I love that one. But yeah, you should be able to make it from scratch without needing a paste, you know, and then just omit the, the, the fishy stuff in it. Okay, so next lot. In this goes. Three mid frames on my friend. <laughs> Fritz and I have the same problem. I just started boiling some carrots and potato and coconut cream milk blender and made it a real nice creamy mash. Hey, Alfred, how you doing? Are you doing a dessert? I, I was, actually. I have I made it already. I'm just letting it cool down before we cut it into slices. You know what? It's still quite warm. 
But Alfred, you should be maybe vaguely familiar with this. It's just a coconut-like um, thing. I'm just gonna not coconut, yeah, coconutty, sweet corny thing. I'm just gonna throw this in the fridge for a bit. Honestly, Noah is usually like when when I'm not streaming, he's happily quietly watching his show around the corner. And of course, when I'm streaming, he has to be in on the action and doing things that are like a little bit like uh, you know attention seeking as well. Little monkey, <laughs> Crunchy. I have to go now. All right, ciao, Crunchy. Thanks for dropping in. And uh, I'm, I don't like chicken in it. I substitute chicken for cabbage. I like the crunch. That's a good idea. Volunteer at a computer recycling place, got first pick of stuff. <laughs> I am current second week of pay period, so broke left over everything. <laughs> I used the contract for support of legacy, it was good for business. <laughs> See. Yeah, whiskey, you should uh, you should build a robot or something like that, you know. Are they actually operational these things or like or are they just like Junk. I'm struggling to get some of this off of the blade. Okay, so that's my fish paste and um that's from one kilo of fish, so that's $6.50 worth of fish, plus the seasoning, right? And like I said, you can use it for a bunch of stuff, people. You can actually like enhance its flavor. If you want to like make fish balls, like deep fried fish balls, you can actually add things like uh, onion, right? Fresh onion, I think really adds to the flavor once it's deep fried. Um, but otherwise, I actually, in all honesty, use it for stuffing vegetables, but my favorite way of having it. Unfortunately, I've only got one eggplant left. I, I want to see how, how it's holding up on the inside. So I'm just going to stuff enough just for dinner tonight. Okay, so that's the eggplant. I do have some left from the other, the other day's batch that I used um, barramundi fillets to make the paste with. Barramundi fillets plus some leftover crab meat, right? Uh, operational, I need them as test systems when I was doing... I needed to see if stuff will work. All right. Oh, it's a mouse I'm hanging out but I'm doing something they want to raise hell <laughs> yeah I know right you know I have a question what do you think of the thermo mix I'm my I'm girl wants to get one I'm not sure it's worth a two grand what do you think <laughs> is she is she uh is she uh look um the thermo mix was my my first kitchen machine right and um the great thing about the thermo mix is that they do like give you a lot of hand holding like they actually not just like you know do show you a demo they also want when they deliver the unit they actually cook with you all right just to get you comfortable to using it and stuff but even after that you have to start thinking about how to adapt your recipes uh, in order to be able to efficiently use the thermo mix right say for instance i i use it a lot i used to anyway okay that's my alarm uh dismiss i used it a lot for um for making curries and stuff like that so usually you think oh to make a curry you was first prepare the spice paste in a blender or something you chop it up you know throw it in a blender and then you would like transfer it into a pan and fry it up and stuff like add the coconut milk add the whatever say chicken or something like that and then cover and simmer and stuff like that you if you're thinking thermomix um then you th think like instead of throwing in a blender you throw like all the uh you know whatever it is you want to blend into the thermomix blend it then you add the oil into the thermo mix and then like then you cook it in the thermo mix and then like um you know if you're really into like the whole stacking the unit like with rice and all that because there are different layers like steamer basket and stuff like that you could in theory plan ahead so that you've got like a, an entire like a three course meal all cooked up into one thing i don't do that so much but it does require you to think through okay how am i going to do this with this and stuff like that but if you're going to use it like that it definitely is worth the money for it okay so there are a number of functions with the thermo mix um that other like comp like you know these like competitors products really can't perform anywhere near as well all right so in that sense 
to me is yeah totally worth getting in so <laughs> i'm not getting paid to say that either uh, customers when Titch decides to offer it, what is one factor they consider in the decision um that's a good question uh alfred <laughs> alfred uh, uh well, in my case, they, um, they partnered me because, first of all, they wanted content that's different because like, everybody, Twitch was really like gaming, right? And they were just breaking out into other types of content. So I was providing something different. Not only was I providing so something different, I was also like, I wasn't a complete noob, all right? They said like, essentially when I came on board like earlier this year as a cooking streamer, they said most of the other cooking streamers were basically gamers who like to cook, cook uh, whereas I'm actually a professional cook and that sort of stuff. So I, I, I brought some level of uh, <laughs> credibility to my cooking streams. So yeah, on that basis, on the, on the fact that I actually do television, let's just you know, and also the fact that I've been live streaming on other platforms for years and have a good size following on all that, right? They, they, they partnered me right away. They, they gave me their uh, they were uh, basically they gave me their verbal assurance that they would partner me even before I actually started streaming. All right, so even though it did take a couple of months after I started streaming, but before everything kind of like got lined up. But yeah, so you know, uh, for those people who always uh, every every now and then I get trolled by these people saying, oh, why is it, you know, how can how can how can you be a partner streamer when you've only got how many viewers and that sort of stuff. But essentially, like ultimately, everything is negotiable, right? Uh, if you're if you're offering something that, uh, you know, that that they, they feel can add value to their uh, platform, then sure, you know, basically, yeah. Um, and and whiskey customers don't often have a backup system. My personal ones would be the. All oh, right, the test. Okay, fair enough. Cool. But you're you're no longer like using these systems though, right, uh, whiskey? Like you no longer you no longer do like that kind of consulting anymore, right? Okay, so basically I'm cutting these into like little pouches, and you can do that not just with eggplant, but with just about anything. You can do it with uh, tofu, right? You can use either like uh, soft like white tofu, or you can use tofu puffs. Um, you can do it with chilies, which um, of, of unfortunately I've only got two chilies here, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do them all right. So, but these two chilies, and if you were actually stuffing chilies, what you want to do when you go to the shops looking for chilies would be f to find ones that are fairly straight, okay? Because if they're curved and whatever, it makes it a little bit hard to stuff them. Um, and like um, when people ask me what type of chilies or peppers we use in Asian cooking, really we look for uh, big chilies or small chilies. These are what we call big chilies, all right? We're not as sophisticated as the Americans when it comes to chilies because you guys are influenced by um, uh, Mexican peppers and whatever. We, we just know them as big chilies and small chilies, right? There's gaming on Twitch, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the contracts are still there, but not worth the stress of in getting rid of them. Okay. <laughs> no worries, Alfreda. Okay, so what you want to do is just pull out the stem in the middle, right? And you can kind of like give it a tap to get rid of the seeds because the seeds where the heat is mostly. Okay, oh, this has been cut up already. Okay, so there you go. So just pull out the stem and voila. And the other thing you can stuff as well, which I'm not going to this time around, are um, mushrooms. You can Again, you can use fresh mushrooms or you can use the dried Chinese mushrooms, right? So with, if you're using the dried Chinese mushrooms, you need to soak them in hot water for like a good 10 minutes or so till they soften and then they're going to break off the stem. Make sure they're dry, pat them dry, right? Squeeze them dry actually because they're quite spongy. And then you can stuff them with the fish paste as well. Okay, so let's do that. And in the meantime, I am going to Smooth so a couple of things out of the way again, and I am going to start heating up some oil. Also, this thing is done, I'll just turn it off. So as far as the oil, I'm really just, you know, in all honesty, just dipping it in the oil. 
um, for the first 30 seconds and I'm going to take them out and transfer them into my air fryer. And the reason I do that is because the, uh, in the air fryer, like it's not sitting in the oil where it just continues to soak up more and more oil because that's the, uh, one of the characteristics of like uh, eggplant, all right? They, they, they're like little sponges. They're very porous, okay? The heat is mostly in the white fuzzy part, the seats, the seats are attached to. Ah, cool, right here. Where are you based? Do you still do? <laughs> I do market stalls. Um, I'm based in Cogra. Whereabouts are you, Raven? Okay, so here you go. I do market stalls, but there's been, there's been this ongoing controversy about me bringing Noah with me to the markets for years now. Um, there's a particular segment of Sydney uh, society that seems hell bent on keeping him Wollongong. All right, okay. Okay, cool. That's uh, like an hour from me, I guess. I've been meaning to drop in um, uh, in Wollongong for a while now because everyone's saying, oh, you have to go, you have to go. It's so nice nowadays and whatever. But yeah, so if anyone's interested in the whole saga with me and the markets and Noah, you can go and visit babynoah.com.au. Um, but yeah, so essentially I've... I've been activated, <laughs> I've been radicalized by these uh, campaigners trying to get rid of my son from the markets because if he's not at the markets, I'm not at the markets, then I will no longer be selling food. It is lovely to do an Eat Street Markets every Thursday, Thursday evening. See, my market is on Thursdays. Is it year round or like, because my market stops in a few weeks for about six or eight weeks. Um, maybe I can go when mine is no longer running. There you go. Okay, you can be a little bit more sophisticated in how you do the stuffing, all right? When I used to do it at home, this is really kind of like a home, home, home comfort food type dish, right? Uh, we would actually have like a, we would use a butter knife, first of all. And also we would, uh, have like a, a bowl of cold water next to it uh, sometimes like um, so, uh, salted cold water that we use to just kind of like um, smooth this smooth the surface with but I'm not gonna fuss too much about this because this is just dinner Yeah, so this latest incident with Noah and the markets got a little bit of media attention. I'm always reticent about like going, pushing too hard for media attention with this. It's fortnightly this year round. Okay, cool. Okay, if people should just mind their own damn <laughs> go away. Be yeah, look, I started up the website and I'm playing the discrimination card because he's got uh, Down syndrome. Um, and some people will think that I'm being a little bit like, you know, facetious and trying to play the victim. I'm not because essentially for years and years, I made excuses for these people for complaining about Noah being at the markets. People were like surreptitiously like start campaigns um, to have Noah removed, right? So that has impacted my ability to trade at a number of markets, including high part night noodle markets, which was my biggest uh, um, income generator every year, right? So I stopped doing high part two years ago because someone complained and uh, the organizers ended up changing the rules so that Noah not only cannot be in the vicinity of my stall, they said that when I come in the morning, because the market is a nighttime market, when I show up in the morning to unload my vehicle, Noah can't even be in my vehicle with me, which is, makes absolutely no sense. But I figured if they would go to that trouble to add that as a special clause in their uh, agreement, then uh, obviously they've got the knives out on me by you know so I said okay I'm not signing this and I will see you later and that was the last time I traded at Hyde Park Lake Noodle Markets uh, but anyway but yeah for the longest time I assumed people thought they were you know uh, they, they, they just kind of see him they see his disabled they think they're looking out for him they you know Every now and then I hear people gripe about why isn't he in childcare? Why aren't you at home looking after him? The fact is he does go to childcare and I do look after him and markets are like once a week, twice a week and he loves going to these markets, you know? So 
Um, if you think that childcare is the only option for working parents, then you know more power to you. But for the, in this latest incident, for people to actually call the cops on me, it just shows how intolerant their views are to the point that they would associate your actions, your your, your parenting style, with um, an element of criminality. Right? Am I right? Right? That's why I went full bore and, and, and called them out for discrimination. Because essentially, ultimately, whether you think you're doing uh, what you think is best for my son or otherwise, you're discriminating against him by virtue of his condition. Because I have had so many um, other market stallholders come up and tell me exactly the same thing in that they raise their kids at the markets. Their kids used to like, you know, actually sleep under their trestle tables when they were tired and whatever. And they thought it was like the best time of their lives and they never got any complaints, right? And the difference between theirs and my situation is that their kids did not have Down syndrome, right? It's like they want, don't want you to stay with no art. Yeah, about earning money. So, well, exactly. That's the thing, you know. That's like, uh, <laughs> it's not disruptive and it's not contaminating the food. That, I know exactly. That's the thing. The police showed up and you know, they checked me out. So whatever people might be inclined to think that, oh, maybe he's too close to the food, and that's what happens when this stuff like this gets out in the media because people who don't know me then start hypothesizing about why this. Um, got to the uh, where it was, where it is. They just start assuming that oh, probably he's too close to the food. Probably this, probably that. Probably damn you to hell. You know, you don't know me. You've never spent one, uh, uh, you know, one day at my market stall. You know, to see actually the, the you know, to get the full picture. And that, you know, that's why I, I don't like um, reaching out to the Daily Mail and all that. Because Daily Mail has actually like featured my story in the past and I got totally told about it, you know. Um, so <laughs> that's why, yeah, like I said, I'd rather just set up a blog. Hopefully people will come across it one way or another. And, yeah. What is this, uh, you need to pay my bills. That's the thing, like people pay, uh, in this day and age, people pay lip service to the whole idea of like uh, workplace flexibility, you know, people like diss on like single parents and benefits, welfare benefits and all that sort of stuff. And yet, you know, when you try and have a, make a go of like, you know, your situation, you know, what they do, they try and like, uh, to, you know, stick up roadblocks along the way. So it's really, really frustrating. Um, there was one woman, again, like this, when this story went out, well, this Facebook page that, uh, you know, has people that don't know me, there's this woman, private school teacher, all right, at a prestigious, uh, like, uh, girls' private school here in Sydney, and this is what she said, right, in the one comment she said, why doesn't she just send him to childcare? All parents who work send their kids to childcare. I have to send my kids to childcare and I have to pay $140 a day for my kids to be in childcare. And as a single parent, she gets more benefits than all of us, so therefore she should be able to afford it. Right? So just in the one comment, she exposed her biases, her, you know, her, her hostility, her intolerance. First of all, right, okay, you can't take your kid to, uh, you, you can't take your kid to work, therefore you have to leave your kid in childcare. Therefore, I can't take my kid to work as well. Is that what you mean? You, you, you stupid, like, uh, you know, elite private school teacher. Where's the logic in that, you know? Your employer doesn't allow you to take your kid to work. That's between you and your employer. Don't make me, like, you know have to fit into like your <laughs> circumstances, so stupid. And for her to kind of like make that cheap shot about me being a single mom and getting all these benefits, it's like, it's mind boggling. And also like when I do try and find childcare for him, every now and then I do, you know, like if I'm doing something where he is going to get in the way, right? I do try and find childcare, but people naturally assume, and I put the word out on Facebook, people naturally assume because of his special needs, that they are going to need like extra effort or special skills to look after him. So I get quoted ridiculous amounts of money to look after him for the day when in fact you can see him like he's a very, very easy kid to look after, you know. Um, he pretty much likes to play by himself, right? But I got quoted the last time I was looking for someone, I got quoted essentially close to $300 for the day on the basis that this woman is a trained uh, uh, ICU nurse. I was thinking, I don't need a freaking trained ICU nurse to look after my damn kid, you know. I just need someone to kind of like push him around the stroller and look around the shops while I'm doing something else, you know, with my work. 
But yeah, so many like misconceptions about my situation without knowing who I am. But ultimately, the bottom line is that why can't I take my kid to work if it's not in my, if it's not in my way and he's not affected by it? And he actually loves it. He thrives being you know, outdoors, right? Then what's the damn problem? It's really frustrating. Simi, hey, almost missed this live stream. Just turned on my PC. <laughs> Better late than never. A late private school teacher. I know, right? They don't want to deal with the guilt associated with it. You need to let us know we go on this Facebook. <laughs> yeah, I know, I should. Us now, how you doing? <laughs> I know, I know. Like, I hate, like, when, when it gets featured on other Facebook, like, uh, on other media, right? Like, it was featured on Mamma Mia, got featured on Kidspot, which is syndicated across um, news.com.au, and it's featured on The Mighty, which is a website or like uh, about like disability and all that. So every time it gets shared across their social media, I don't want to read the comments because again, like I said, people start attacking me based on their own presumptions of my situation, which they know nothing about, you know. But invariably, some like well-meaning like uh, say associate of mine who might have seen it will tag me in the post. Hey, Jackie, you know, sort of thing, you know. You're so brave and whatever. So I'll go over and say, what am I so brave about? I realize they'll be all like, you know couple of people dissing like my situation it just drives me insane i don't want to know about it guys <laughs> i wish mothers stuck together and held each other i know don't you reckon yeah look to be fair like i said i think it's the minority who feel who feel like that you know um but i think like there's a there's a level of elitism about it. The last two times these people complained, like the first time it happened was two years ago at one of my other markets that I ended up quitting, right? And I was told a person who wanted to remain anonymous had been going around for a whole month correcting, collecting signatures to have my son removed from the market and apparently they said, they said the next step was they're going to like uh, launch the petition with the organizers and with docs and whatever else, you know. Um, I never really knew their motivation, right? They said, oh, it's to do with child welfare, right? But again, if you don't talk to me directly, I don't know who you are, I don't know what uh, drives you and whatever, so I never knew about it. I had actually left that market and it created a huge media storm. Um, but the, this time around, a year ago this time around, over at Concord Hospital Market, which is my one last weekly market, right, this woman came up and abused me and said, you know, you know ma'am, you're cooking over there and you're ignoring your son who's sitting in a cot. Mind you, she doesn't mention he's sitting in the cot happily, like absorbing the atmosphere and happily interacting with people. It's not like he was distressed in the cot. It's not as though he was demanding attention. Nothing like that at all. You're sitting, uh, yeah, 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 you're cooking over here. You're ignoring your son in the cot. I'm going to report you for child abuse, right? So I pulled out my camera phone and I started recording our interaction. And it got a little bit heated, right? And I, I went on television to talk about it. Um, but it just goes to show people's prejudices. And then I got an email, like a pseudo apology from the hospital, right? Because this was at Concord Hospital. The organizers of the market uh, are the uh, hospital marketing department, essentially. And the marketing department had sent me an email at the end of the day and she said, oh, really? Um, you know, I, I, they, they, you know, I think they, they know how to couch their words in such a way that will not make them li liable. Uh, you know, legally, right? So they say, I regret to hear about this incident at the, your market store today. And I just want to point out that this woman was not actually a part of our hospital community. She was just here for the day for training, all right? And I just want to assure you that our hospital community, uh, you know, the ma majority of our hospital community do support you bringing your child along, all right? So that was the end of it. But it shows, okay, you realize this woman had never seen me, had never, like, she, she basically, like, came and saw like a five second sliver of my life and decided to judge me on that basis. This time around, right, which happened a few weeks ago, uh, about a month ago now, uh, less than a month ago, um, this other person who basically called the police apparently doesn't usually work on market days. She just happened to be there that day. And again, just based on her like one singular uh, observation of my situation decided to call the police on me. It's so ridiculous. I mean, it's unbelievable. And whereas like I've got a hospital staff that uh, consists of doctors and nurses and other medical professionals who've been buying from me for years and years and have seen Noah there for years and years. If they had, if anyone should have any like um, claim to, uh, you know, to knowing like, a, you know, a child's like well-being, like, you know, 
you think they would know, right? But no, they every week they come, they're interacting with him, they're playing with him and stuff like that, and he loves it. So they don't have a problem. Why do these people who don't know me, don't know my situation, decide they do? It's so annoying. <laughs> we will go to bed, like I said before, my little brothers are to so now shut now with Chris. <laughs> Good on ya. <laughs> So if I can get three hundred dollars a day for looking after Asian, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. K, I I know it's crazy. <laughs> There's nothing wrong because having supervisor alone time pander to them, constant attention, they end up spoiled and entitled. Absolutely no problem with your parenting. I know. Well, that's the thing, right? It's like I, I, you know, I, I always put it down to a cultural issue. For the longest time, I said, oh, well, you know, in Malaysia, my I worked in my family's business, you know, from the time I was a little kid, and like in Malaysia and Asia, it's very normal to see kids running around at your family's, and you know, at your parents' uh, market store, right? Because my parents were hawkers, you know back in the day so uh, I said look uh, maybe in Australia people expect your kids to be in childcare but like I said you know since after that first incident all these uh, Australian market store holders came up and told me look our kids grew up in the markets never had a problem you know and these Australian market store holders told me they're discriminating against you so um, but still I, I continue to make excuses for them but not anymore like I said I'm totally playing all the cards I have you know the, the, the single mother card <laughs> The special needs child card, the, uh, <laughs> the race card, <laughs> whatever else. But ultimately what it comes down to is just um, an element of elitism, right? These are not like, we're not talking about bogans and like ignorant like rednecks who are complaining against me. It's these, it's these stupid like elite private school teachers and like sanctimonious like um, medical staff from other hospitals and whatever. So they're highly educated, but it shows their intolerance when like uh, <laughs> when they, they, they apply their idea of like parenting onto other people because ultimately they think they know more than you, you know, whether because they think that you, you do manual labor, therefore you must be like, you know, uh, mentally challenged or, you know, uh, because you're a single mother, you must be inferior because you're you're, you're, you're Asian, you must be inferior. And the funny thing is, the only other person who told me um, that had an incident, right, was this woman who reached out to me on Facebook and she said, oh, look, you know, my mom and dad worked so hard when we were little and we were helping them, we were at the shop with them and someone called the police on them. And guess what skin color they have? <laughs> Same as me. So like I said, I'm not playing the race car per se, but I think like people who do this sort of thing are people who pres presume uh, that they're superior to you, whether by virtue of their intellect, their education level or whatever else it is, you know. So it's frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> more special more special than ASD kids <laughs> I said it's very widespread in Australia Australia is very multicultural I actually can't believe there are people out there that seem to think it's an issue lots of restaurants small businesses have the kids around even getting involved yeah I know right the funny thing is like <laughs> the kids fine I have no issues that's the thing um the funny thing is it's like his favorite day of the week you know like you know up until this year this year he actually goes to preschool so he's not even at the market except during uh, school holidays which was you know what happened that this last time was the school holiday so he didn't have preschool for the day and I brought him along but otherwise you wouldn't see him on the Thursday anymore but the thing is like um, when I pull up at the market he starts laughing and he starts like uh, kicking around in the car and stuff like that because he's excited to be there you know and in fact like two uh, two weeks or one week prior that weekend when I started getting that flu really bad I actually called my daughter over to because uh, I had a special one-off market uh, the Rivendell flower show that I mentioned to you guys were coming up was coming up like a while back um, so that was a weekend event and I was feeling sick enough where I felt that I'm not gonna be able to do justice uh, with him being with me there. So I actually asked my daughter to come and pick him up from the market and look after him. And she came and he didn't wanna go. So she had to go off and come back two hours later. And again, he didn't wanna leave sort of thing. He just loves the market so much. So she actually literally had to carry him off, you know, with her in her arms, cause he, he didn't wanna go. He loves it there. That's the thing, if he's happy there and he loves it there, then like, why are you to kind of like, Call the police of all things it's crazy. Asian shops. <laughs> it's like it's not fine. <laughs> yeah, look, you know, I, I'm, you know, like I said, it's just, it's just like you know, essentially like, I think like you know, elitism. People who think they they know that it's just their way or the highway. You know, like I said, it's one thing for you to think, all right, you can you can like. 
quietly judge other people's parenting. And people do that all the time, right? They might think, oh, you know, I think you're feeding your kid too much rubbish or whatever. But you keep it to yourself. But to call the police, right? That really, I mean, it's just completely beyond the pale. That just assumes that, like, you think that, you know, your ideas are right and my ideas are criminal, all right? Like I said, he wasn't, there was nothing wrong with him. The cops came in and said he looks happy enough. So, yeah, he looks happy enough. Oh, we're just going to go and go back and tell them that uh, we've spoken to the mother. I was thinking, like, I was sick that day. I was still, I still had my cold, and I didn't really kind of, like, push the point too far. I actually ended up calling the police station, like, a few days later, and left a message for the two police officers to call me back. Neither of them have, so I want to put it out there. But it just goes to show, I want to actually engage with them what exactly was in the complaint. And, like, I don't think it's good enough for them to go back to that person and say, it's okay, we've spoken to the mother, she had him there because it was the school holiday. No, that's not good enough. They should actually put the hard word on this dumbass and tell them that they were making like a, you know, a, a spurious complaint and if they waste the, uh, the cops time, you know, any more in future, they're going to be in trouble. I reckon that that's the hard line we should draw, you know, as far as their, their action. Yeah, so anyway, that's my little rant. <laughs> okay, let's have a look. So this has produced more liquid, right? You can see. That's the steamed radish. Let's take it out. No, we don't touch, don't touch. Uh, what area are you from? As in like what country like what country am I from originally, you mean? I am from Malaysia. Yeah, I live in Congra. <laughs> if that's what you mean. It's always hard when people ask where you're from, do they mean like which state or like <laughs> where I'm from, you know, originally. I'm just gonna taste this this in its uh, thing, all right. Let me just move the oil back in the kitchen. Okay, there you go. So this is what it looks like. I feel the same as military brat. I'm not sure what to say sometimes. A military brat. Oh, cool. Uh, eggplant after 15 minutes in the air fryer and then what I'm going to actually do you can eat it now as is right you can throw it in like with like uh, some soupy noodles or something like that but I actually like to braise them which is uh, what makes them Hakka style okay so stuffed vegetables are in Chinese they're called yong tau fu which literally actually means stuffed tofu because traditionally it's uh, tofu that's uh, kind of like the feature ingredient in this kind of like stuff, smorgasbord of vegetables, right? So yong tau fu, stuffed tofu, right? When you say yong tau fu hakka style, which is my uh, ethnicity, like my, my dialect group, right? It means that it's kind of like braised with oyster sauce and garlic and that sort of stuff. Okay. I was born in Hawaii and lived there for a year. All oh, right, grew up in Alaska and Florida. Oh, so many appliances. I know, right? <laughs> uh, that's from like when I, yeah. Look, I, 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 the only thing I paid for in this row here is my thermo mix, and unfortunately, I had to pay for my thermo mix. I was told that someone was going to try and get it for me for free, but <laughs> I'm not that big of a deal. <laughs> but all the other stuff were all sent to me uh, by virtue of. You know, uh, I was uh, I was ambassador of a, a summer fruit festival last summer, and I scored a uh, yeah a fair number of cooking appliances from that. And then uh, I also get sent a lot of other appliances to either test or to feature in my live broadcasts, basically. Let's try this. Okay, so I'm just trying to soup. Okay, it's fairly intense in flavor, but it's nice. It's not something that you would eat just like that. You would want some rice with it because it's a, probably because of all the chicken powder. It tastes a little bit uh, <laughs> strong. 
What's one appliance you couldn't live without? That is a question I get asked all the time. If I were to put, uh, pick one of these over here. Look, they all have their uh, benefits. I really like the uh, Optimum Pressure Cook Pro. So pressure cooker, I use it to cook the rice in because I use that every day, right? Because you eat a lot of rice. And also you can pressure cook your meats and all that in there easily without having to worry about keeping an eye on the stove. Because when I had it at my restaurant, I had a number of like regular gas pressure cookers and it's always a pain. And also they're loud the way they, they whistle. This one is pretty, in, uh, pretty in, um, unobtrusive as far as a pressure cooker is. So I really, really like that. Um, the other thing is the thermo mix. Um, having said that, I don't use it as often as I used to now. Um, uh, part of my problem, I mean, like, it, it's fabulous for, like, you know, pureeing stuff to a really, really fine, um, you know, it can basically turn rice into rice flour for you, okay, and regular sugar into icing sugar and that sort of stuff. Um, so it does that uh, better than some of the other appliances out there. The only uh, problem I have with it is that the maximum heat level is capped at 120 degrees. So if you're trying, obviously you can't deep fry anything in it, but you can't really brown anything in it either, right? So when I do do my curry paste and that sort of stuff in there, they don't quite like, uh, they don't quite like brown the way I, I want them to, all right? So you, you'll see recipes for Thermomix rendang, Thermomix curries and stuff like that. And that's fine, but ultimately I think um, something to a higher heat level would actually produce uh, something that's more akin to how we traditionally cook our curries, I think, yeah. <laughs> let's, let's say you have a limit, but you're just starting to stock up your kitchen, what would you get first? <laughs> a knife, yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, appliance wise. Uh, look, the thermo Thermomix is pretty expensive, okay? Um, what would I get first? Uh, probably, probably the pressure cooker actually, because I use it more. In all honesty, so the pressure cooker is great for like you know when you're cooking a curry, like you want to fast track like a a roast or something like that. You can do a lot of things with it. You can even bake in it. Really, in theory, I haven't really tried that, but um, <laughs> but yeah. So everything like it's hard for me to actually think of what to get rid of. You can't see it on this wall here. I've got like three three shelving racks over here that are filled with other appliances and also uh, um, like pots and pans and stuff like that as well. I even have like a gelato maker over here which I've used like maybe two times um, and that was sent out to me. But yeah, <laughs> you know, make more of my own paste. I have no idea how. Okay, well if you want to make your own paste then get a Thermomix, alright? Or if you want to save some money, get a Thermocook which is this one over here, okay? It's like a, basically a competitor to Thermomix, um, but it's powerful enough that it can blend like things like lemongrass and, and galangal and all that um, to the consistency that you want in a curry paste. Um, and that's one thing that I think I, I really missed when I had my restaurant because these appliances didn't exist in my consciousness back then and I broke so many regular blenders and I ended up, that's why you'll see with a lot of my cooking that I use a lot of shortcuts, I use like dried this, dried that, uh, like powdered galangal, powdered lemongrass and that sort of stuff, it's because of my experience trying to blend all these in like regular blenders. I even had like a commercial blend, like food processor back in the day, it cost me $1,500 and it broke just from blending, like from, from overuse basically. But um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if a Nutri -Bullet, how powerful a Nutri Bullet is, um, in all honesty. But um, if you want something like a Thermo, thermo Mix or Thermo Cook, when you blend the um, lemongrass and uh, especially Galango, Galango is kind of like the, the, the test because Galango is very woody. So go and buy a knob of Galango and try it in your Nutri Bullet and see how well, how well it blends it, right? Because I know that a lot of juicer companies or uh, companies that produce these like smoothie blenders and whatever, they claim that their um, appliances are really powerful. I don't know if they're powerful enough to blend lemongrass and galangal well enough. But if they are, then yeah, maybe you can live with using that, you know. Um. Alright, this is quite nice. I'm not, I don't think I'm going to be able to finish it there. <laughs> That's what happens when you've got like just you and like little Noah to eat all this up. Oh. But let me get the um, the sweet corn thing out.
fat uh, so sweet corn. Let me just put it on something solid. No, we don't play with that. Then you wanna go watch your TV? Don't no watch TV. Here we go. Yeah, we go. Yeah. Don't watch your show, show. Yeah. Here, I'll just stick it on here. Vinka from Malaysia. Are you in Malaysia now, or you uh? somewhere outside of Malaysia. Like Remy's from Malaysia as well. And for the longest time, I assumed she lived in Australia or someplace Western. It turned out she is in Malaysia itself. Okay, so this is now solid, you can see it. Okay, so all this was, was just sweet corn, plus coconut cream, coconut milk, plus sugar, plus this uh, log of mung, mung bean flour, right? What we call the pung hun kue in Malaysia and Indonesia which essentially is kind of like um, what is it's almost like using custard powder really I guess uh, maybe a little bit more solid okay so and cooked up and then thrown into this right let's cut it up so this should ideally have been refrigerated till it's cold from KL working in Brisbane all right you assume I'm from no, I, I knew um, I knew after our f uh, first or second broadcast when you told me, Remy. But um, I I assumed originally that when you said you were from Malaysia, I assumed that you were bigger, so it's solidified, right? I assumed that you were actually in Australia. I miss Malaysian food. I haven't been home for t two and a half years. <laughs> mm. All right, this is pretty good. I told you that like, last couple of times I made that, I was a little bit disappointed, but this is pretty good. Mm. Mm. It still feels to me that if you use like freshly squeezed coconut milk, it'll be even better. All right, so I, I use a pack of coconut milk here. Mm. It's making me so hungry. <laughs> now I've got to figure out what to do with the rest of this, you know. <laughs> That's the thing. If you guys are anywhere near me, drop in sometime and I'll give you some free food. Mm. So these are like basically like quick and easy. This is something you can actually just make and take to morning tea. You don't even like all, all I did was just cook it till it thickened up in the pan. You don't actually have to steam it or or anything else. <laughs> I totally would if I could. Okay, guys. Um, New South Wales, New South Wales. Crunchy's gone, but doesn't matter, we'll do a draw anyway. So we've got Raven. Who else is from New South Wales who's left? Is uh, Minch still around? Minch, where are you? Minch, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's do this. Um, anyone else? Say hello if you're from New South Wales. Oops, what did I just do? Oops, what did I just do? Hmm. Twitch overlay. I've just messed up my Twitch overlay. Hang on. Okay, here you go. Okay, better. Okay, so we've got Minch and we've got uh, Raven. Let me pull up. Does everyone else want to be in the running and they, they, they nominate who they want? No, I think that's unfair. Okay, let's go to Nightbot. We're going to use Nightbot to do the draw. So, so far we've got Raven, we've got Minch, anyone else? Remy couldn't be Australian even she tried. That's harsh. Okay. Regular subscribers, users. Okay. Good I mean. <laughs> I love you, Minch. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I'm still waiting for my food. Yeah, next time you win something substantial, I'll send it along with the, the other stuff. All right, Raven, Minch, your name is not showing up. Minch, where is Minch? Can I manually add someone? Minch, say hello again, because your name's not showing up. Uh, 
All right. I'm still not getting Minch. Minch, you need to say hello. Oh, there you go, Minch. Okay, let's roll it. Okay, so if uh, uh, if someone wins it who's not from New South Wales, we're gonna roll again. All right. Minch, you want it? <laughs> Oh, Sammy just started watching. All right, there you go, Minch. You won it. This is what you want. Set of four sources, courtesy of I Am Australia. Um, and I will send them the name at the end of like the, the giveaway, all right? So we're down to five. Um, when I've reached uh, all ten giveaways, I'll send your name along with your address. So uh, message me. Send me, a, uh, send me a whisper or post on Discord what your uh, name and address is. And they will courier it to you. Um, uh, <laughs> Zeno. <laughs> All right. So don't forget to send me your address, and I will uh, organize for that to be shipped out to you at the end of the giveaway. All right. So congratulations, Mitch. <laughs> Second time lucky. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm gonna wrap it up here. So that was the that was the co uh, sweet corn sweet, right? And it's pretty easy. And you saw me towards the end where I said, oh, it tasted like it needed a little bit more sugar and I sprinkled some more over it. I, I, did, I don't think I needed to do that in hindsight, all right? Because once it's settled, once it's cooled down, it actually tastes sweeter than what, what it tastes like when it's hot. So that was a little bit of a mistake. It's a little bit too sweet for me. <laughs> You're totally not rigged at all. <laughs> I know, right, Raven? Next time, Raven. <laughs> all right. And this is my leftover radish that I steamed with just some stock and like some seasoning like a little bit of pepper a little bit of sugar some chicken powder all right in lieu of uh, uh light soya sauce is what the original recipe called for but yeah i'm not sure what I eat this <laughs> and then i've got my eggplant which i'm gonna braise later on tonight as a uh, part of my dinner all right with like i said oyster sauce garlic you saw me do it in my last broadcast if not you can go back and watch it there um <laughs> But anyway, yeah, thanks guys for hanging around. Um, yeah, and thanks to I Am Australia for the giveaway. Uh, I've got five more sets of those if you're from New South Wales. Make sure you follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Jackie M Food for your chance to win one of these. Uh, thanks so much, uh, Whiskey. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for being cool. And, um, and yeah, I've got other giveaways I'm going to announce later on. Um, so make sure you keep an eye out. I don't know what... Oh yeah, what follower numbers I'm at, right? But for the serious, like the, 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 the high value giveaways, I'm going to have like specific criteria connected to them as in like uh, target follower numbers. So when I hit 2000 followers, uh, I will have two uh, barbecues to give away to people in Australia, all right? But I, I wanna hit 2000 by the end of next month. Uh, private message in Twitch will be fine. Thank you, Minch. Uh, <laughs> yeah, next time. Um, but if I, if I don't hit that target, I'm actually going to confiscate the, those giveaways and actually just um, <laughs> sell them or something, all right? Because they're actually stuff that I earn as opposed to uh, stuff that I, uh, whatever. <laughs> to the bit, no, no. <laughs> oh, isn't that cute? Uh, a, little, a, a little troll, a little bit late to the game, sweetheart. <laughs> Minnow. Try harder next time, all right? You want to troll me? You got to get in early so that I can ban you early and then you'll be really, really ashamed. But anyway, <laughs> too bad. Um, yeah, all right, guys. Thanks again. I will see you uh, next on this Friday, Sydney time at 6 p.m. Um, and don't forget uh, campfire stories on Saturday night at 10 p.m. as well. Campfire is always fun because I don't have to actually cook, all right? That's my kind of my favorite kind of stream. <laughs> anyway, thanks again. I'll see you. Ciao.